everyone and thanks for joining me. Today I want to go deep into the aspect of artificial intelligence and how it's shaping, of course, human relationships. We want to look at it now and also in the future. It's a powerful force that is changing the way we connect and how we communicate and even how we understand each other. And that's why I want to talk about this topic today. But like all powerful tools, I want to see that there are positives as well as negatives. So let us explore some of these positives and negatives together. Let me see that AI has a possibility to enhance our communication. AI platforms and chatbots and various virtual assistants are breaking down language in such a way that it's enabling people to communicate in real time. Just imagine, you go to another country, have no form of communication, but you take out your application and you're using AI to communicate immediately. I went to France and had a wonderful time there all because of my app as it relates to AI. So we are making our world a bit smaller and we're using language as a way of inclusion. Let's say for instance, a student in Brazil and a student in Japan, they're having this conversation in real time. They're both different languages, but at the same time they can communicate. That's what's happening in the world. There's seamless communication. So AI has a lot to offer as it relates to relationship building but notwithstanding, there are some issues that we must address, and I'll touch on these eventually. Our social media feeds are always taken up by AI now. We can go shopping online. AI analyzes your behavior and, of course, your preferences, just like it's doing to your Netflix and your other platforms that you use. In this digital space, you have an interaction with the device or the tool that you're using to make that connection. And as you go through, you're engaging. As I stated before, think about platforms like Netflix and of course Spotify that make recommendations for you to watch. It feels as if they know exactly what you want and they give you. As a matter of fact, that's based on algorithms. So it seems as if they're a friend to you, right? They know exactly what to pick. However, let me say that with this personalization also, there are some downfalls, which I will get to in a moment. We're not going to think about the negative yet, but let's go further. Virtual companion to support. You know, recently I realized that there's a movement towards certain accommodations that some people need to have a companion. For example, individuals who are autistic, Sometimes having that human sort of connection through an interface as it relates to a device, that might be okay. They have a digital friend or an assistant who can offer some support. I think about the aspect connection with emotional support. It's possible. But I want to say that in some cases, they might not have it instantly. And that app, as I've seen before, can work wonders. I've seen a father develop an application like that to help others. So therefore, there are applications that can offer emotional support and companionship. But I urge you, there's a warning in that too. We have to be very careful. They might, of course, help to get us away from loneliness and isolation, but they might build a connection to tools and objects that might not be really human. And that's the reality. When we look at certain tools, and I give a warning for this one. There are some individuals who are advocating for the use of AI-driven mental health applications that provide therapy and counseling. While I've heard the story about that, I would give a warning because you know what? Every case is different. And a generalization as it relates to an algorithm giving support might not be worth it. Sometimes it's necessary to have that human connection. Now, we also have to look at the issue of emotional intelligence. The more you get embraced with AI, you realize that it is learning our behavior. It sometimes recognizes how to address humans and how to respond to humans in a certain way. So when we look at that sort of interaction, we can see there are certain possibilities. 
like customer service. We can have educational platforms. Just think about it, a virtual tutor who can be there for students when they need help. And of course, take on different aspects as it relates to the student. They actually can give help in real time. But you know what I'm saying is, why do we move towards AI for customer service when in truth and in fact, we can enhance the human experience by teaching people how to really address people. I want people to address me rather than me using an application. I just feel better sometimes in decision making. AI has the ability now to predict behavior and preferences, offering, let me say, relationship advice. Yes. So many things have been happening. Many people are now using apps for dating to ensure that they get the best possible match. But the reality is it has thrown things off the way things were before. And many individuals have stated that this might not be the ideal way to find friendship. Yes, don't get me wrong. Some people have been successful. Now, here goes the negative aspect. When we look at interaction, I always say that as a human being, we connect with people. There's an upside, yes, when we have face-to-face -face interaction. As we rely more heavily on AI-driven communication, we're losing in-depth quality time to connect with people. And the over-reliance on digital technology can lead to social isolation. It can weaken the bonds that we have when we connect to people. I must say that we are all guilty of doing this. I remember entering into a parent-teacher's meeting situation and all the teachers were there, yes, waiting for us as parents, and every one of the parents had a mobile device. So I want to say I'm sometimes guilty of that. While convenience is important, we have to understand that it's necessary to build deep relationships with others. That's so important. Another concerning issue is the issue of privacy. AI, of course, has a capacity to analyze vast amount of data, and that raises significant concern. I'm always worried about that. This can affect everyone or personal relationship. Imagine consistently worrying about your privacy, about the conversation that you had with someone, and if they are going to use that information against you. It's all possible. And as a result of that, because of that, no, you're guarded. You're guarded about what you say to the person or text. I want to also say that the use of AI can, of course, erode our physical social skills. AI can lead to erosion by we are spending less time with people and more time on our screens. We may develop weaker physical social skills that impacts the way we deal with people face to face. The reality is, it's not a theoretical risk, it's what's already happening. And the research has shown that young people in particular are spending less time in face-to-face -face interaction, and that has implication for all of us. Let me say that they have to develop the need for empathy and a deep social connection. Let me say that I am concerned, really concerned about what is taking place, because as we move forward, to the realm of AI. We're also looking at digital overdependency. The convenience of AI has led to the decrease in real world interaction. And this is so sad. I've often said that, of course, we have to engage with others. This over reliance on AI can hinder the development of personal relationships again. And of course, it can limit community engagement. And of course, it can reduce our very social fabric of our society. Since we are going to be glued in these silos of communication that we do not go externally to explore other perspectives, we can be in a problem. So therefore, the behavior that you're stuck to your device and you're over-dependent on your AI application creates a problem because it limits genuine engagement, and reduces our connectivity as human beings. Let me say that it is serious, and we have to understand that 
the very social fabric of our society can be eroded. I can contribute to the fragmentation of our society as stated before. Algorithms that are designed to keep us glued to the system are detrimental. And of course, they create echo chambers. This lead, of course, to our society having the biggest problem. People who cannot think critically. And not to mention those younger individuals who are not exposed to the art of critical thinking. I want to say, instead of AI bringing us together, AI can push us into isolation, into a bubble that limits our interaction, that limits our critical thought, that weakens the very fabric of our society. Let me end by asking this question. So where does this leave us all? AI, yes, is a powerful tool in shaping relationships in very profound ways that you can think of. But the future depends on how you will use it and how you choose to apply it, whether you allow it to divide us or you allow it to bring us together. However, let me say that we must approach AI with caution and with an awareness that all is not well with this application, with an understanding that they are both positives and negatives that can take place. But we must reduce, of course, the negatives. Let me ensure you that as we advance towards this technological revolution, we must never lose sight of humanity, of human dignity, and the ability for us to connect, to understand each other, and of course, to build meaningful relationships that will be ultimate for own survival. That's all for now. Thanks for listening.